three are going to go into the Metzler 1000 and uh, Ducati, Cor Ducati Coventry uh, JHP Challenge. Front row to grid, Jordan Browse, middle, uh, Reese Young, then Simon Adams. Those are your front three on the grid. Will the BMW make up for his qualifying times and get away? Oh, no! going on there but he has dropped him down the field like an absolute stone that bike did not want to go anywhere i don't know whether that was gear selection problems or whether the thing just said don't want to know major league start from gallington with contreus adams ashcroft cameron kilty uh hasler and tremaine are coming through and picking up the top 10. there was a 116 on that lap from Brouse, which is slightly quicker, I think he put down in qualifying. Yeah, he's done a 117, so he's certainly got the bit between his teeth and he's trying to make the breakaway now. Gallington, I think, is still in second position on the Ducati and is really, dare I say it, ringing. It must be ringing the neck of that 959 to try and keep up with uh, Brouse in front. Young is about one, was about 1.2 seconds behind when they came over the line. We'll see what the gap looks like this time. And they just dip out of sight from me. Then I'll wait for them to break cover. Oh, my goodness me, don't do that. As Browse came across with the front wheel hoisted way too far in the air out of Roberts. And has tipped it in the red gate. And what's Gallington doing behind him? He's on a 113.6. Browse put in the 112.7 last time around that was the fastest lap they've got to go absolutely flat chat straight away Contreras has moved up a place I believe into third position with young mod dropping down at another place down into fourth again the front wheel from Browse comes flying up in the air on the BMW Ducati comes bellowing through here and is now being chased it's a battle for third fourth and fifth I think that he's heating up between Contreras Adams and Young as they come across the line they are all picking in 113s or, one, or low 114s so the last place on the podium as I put it is still up for grabs with that one Across the line, one more lap to go. Browse whacks in again, a one minute 12. Gallington just about keep away. So it's a 6.1 second gap and about the three second gap back to third place contrast. This is, dare I say, it, unless the wheels go square, this looks to be that this is going to be Jordan Browse's race. I don't think there's going to be any change unless somebody does something really brave or drastic on the last lap to. Uh, that battle that's happening between third, fourth and fifth position. As we run down, the leader comes across the line, front wheel comes up in the air where he's been most of the time as he breaks cover, takes a checkered flag as Jordan Browse. Gallington comes across with a Ducati, that is a good race for him, bringing bring up something like that. My name's Rhys Young, I'm uh, 30 years old and I'm running in the Newcomer Foul. This is my um, third race event and yeah, the old girl is doing quite well. <laughs> we had a, a, a bad, well I say a bad start, we were fourth in the first race and um, I didn't quite feel like I had the pace to go with the front boys but after uh, some tweaks and some new pads, uh, putting a much better time. I took off about the second, maybe a second and a half off my time and um, was able, with a couple of errors from the other boys, um, was able to crack on and get a couple of wins today in a second. So happy with that, good for the championship and what it's proven is that it's a very, very long season and although a lot of people have the pace, it's hard to keep that up lap after lap. So keep the uh, strength in the old arms and carry on. Metzler Newcomer 600 pre-injection 600 and the Moto 40 Street, Moto 46 Street Bike Cup. See this, Mr. Jones. This is, sorry, I've got my apprentice up here for next weekend. See all this? This is all my paperwork. So a couple of years back, I went and did a round on a CB500 at Emra, and it was just so much fun. It was such a good laugh. It was so chilled out. So when Kawasaki built this thing, I was all over it, and I've been waiting to ride it for, well, well, since they unveiled it. And I've got to say, it has been incredible. So we won in the Moto 46 street bike class. So essentially it is a class made up for naked bikes. So this is legible, this is Kawasaki Z900. 
there is a field full of Triumph Street Triple RSs, 765s. You can also run 890 Dukes, and it is it is the class that I have been waiting for to go racing. So all clear at the back. We look for lights, which we get now, and oh, it's a bit creeping in about the second stroke, third row. That is going to be interesting because the it was well, it wasn't rolling. It was walking off the line, but then the brakes came off. We'll wait for everybody to clear. It looks pretty much like our pole man has just dropped back a slot. Someone made it meteoric start in that lot and has put his nose out in front getting very tight as they drop round to McLean's there is something like a group of about half a dozen or more all going to be challenging as they come down the Dunlop straight so it's going to be who's got the speed and then who's got the anchors left at the best at uh, the rest of it as they come into Roberts which you can't actually see at the moment all squeezing through they'll break cover and come through now up on the rumble strip and across the line they go and uh, you. this is turned into a nine lapper at number 12 hedges in the lead from stevens fothergill evan stanley crossley it'll be interesting to see hedges done a 120.5 last time around from 120.6 from sutcliffe then we wait for him to break cover as they come down to Robert Chicane, and it looks to be there is a real gap now as Hedges goes across the line. What's he put down this time? A 114 from Sutcliffe, who've done a 115, so really starting to warm things up. This is a nine lapper because they had to do a extra warm up lap. As the rest of the field come through, Fothergill has made his way up. So you've got the three new comebacks, the number 28 machine. Now, where's that come from? In qualifying, have a look down here. That has come from a little way back because I'm desperately trying to find it. Fothergill, Fothergill, where are you? Nope, still can't find number 28 bike. So he's come from way back somewhere to be in third position as they went across the line last time, pushing in the 116. Sorry, just getting reports we've got. Somebody has gone down and has uh, had out. That was me, commentator's curse. There is somebody down in Craner. can do something on the way out. Now we're getting into the back mark territory as well, which is going to be real fun and games. Leader has got himself past, I believe, one of the back markers. Wait for the leader to break cover and pick up the checkered flag this time around. It. And coming into view now is the leader and head Johnny Hedges takes the win. Again, thick and fast, we come through, trying to uh, obviously to make up a bit of time. Uh, the Pirelli Super Series 1000, supported by Pirelli Premier 1000, disappears off on their warm-up lap. Sorry, I was just sorting my tech out here, because there's bits and pieces up here that weren't doing what they should do. Braden Elliott, pole position, 108. 0.617 even. Joe Talbot sitting on uh, the middle of the front row with the 18.9 and Cade Burway were on the number 71 with a 19.3. Very, very strong front row. As the revs go up and the lights go out and Poleman gets an absolute flyer away at the moment. As the rest of the field start to bunch up as they come down into Redgate, taking the Haslam line, part of the pit entrance or exit sorry hedge has got absolutely sorry brayden elliott has got a cracking start out from there and should be the first one to show his nose as they come back into view when they come out of starkey's 
bridge and through into Swan's Curve. He was off the line like a scalded cat. Some of the, like I say, one of my favourite sayings, someone's had their three weeks fix this morning because they come down the straight and head towards Robert Chicane, which is the last one that brings you out just before you join up with the Melbourne Loop. That was a very, very quick opening up at 1 minute 11.6 for Braden Elliott as he's uh, taken this by absolute scruff of the neck. That bike was wriggling all over the place as he came past myself, exiting Ella Roberts front wheel in the air. The back was squirming around all over the place under power as he got that really moving and he's really starting to break the toe from the others. That was about a 1.3 gap as, as they came across the line. He says one lap to go, but I've missed the flag, I think. He says one to go. Talbot's on the move. He may, may just the second place this lap. As I'm watching them go around, he doesn't seem to be close enough at the moment as they're going up through Schwantz and then going along through McLean's. But the amount of speed I think that Kawasaki's got down the straight could be the telling factor as a look who is 0.6 of a second as all three bikes come down towards the braking area for the Robert Chicane. I don't think there's going to be any change in the position but you never know as Kerr is really closed up but I think it was just that little bit too far as Braden Elliott takes the win by 0.3 of a second from from Richard Kerr with Joe Talbot in third place. Then it was Tom Oliver followed in by the 55 machine of Beach, uh, Ash Beach uh, going through. We're followed in by Hedger, Norton, Railton, Luxton and Grigger in 10th position. Sam Middlemass, Middlemass even, sorry for my words, uh, made it up into 11th with uh, Cooper coming in in 12th position. Frantic, absolutely frantic. And uh, fantastic race from... The No Limit 600, 600 Cup 600s come out. That sounded really bad. Sorry, I'll get that one worked out in a minute. And then the Pirelli uh, Super Series 600s also making their way out onto the track now. The uh, well nicknamed, nicknamed class, the uh, 600s, as was nicknamed by uh, Sir Mr. J. Whittam Esquire of uh, Paris, somewhere up in the northern climes of the, uh, of the country. And he has stuck forevermore that the 600s is always known as the axe murderer's class because it's just absolutely frantic. We wait for the lights to come on and they will go off. And it's a fairly even start from everybody on the first two rows. There's a couple making their way up from about the third or the full throw. In the meantime, that break is going to be... I can certainly make out the orange and white colours of Aaron Sylvester going around there. I think he was going around in that fourth or fifth place. Nobody has really made the break out of this one as they go and sweep through McLean's. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's probably about ten stall. All I can see is a train of bikes coming down towards me. It is absolutely nose to tail as they go through. Somebody slipstreaming right the way through there. First to second is Finley Arscott. Still the 90 99 machine of Bednark, who is in first position with Finley Ascot about a point two of a second behind Smart on the 10. 0.3 behind him, so he's nothing to choose between those three riders up in the top position, certainly ones, twos and threes. Deep breath, wait for them to come back round again. 
see where they are this time. Has it all closed up? Well, the back markers starting to uh, play their unwitting part in the lead for this, uh, or uh, the win for this race. Alderson still in the lead with Ascot behind him by only 0.3 of a second. We'll wait to see when they break the beams this time as if it is changing. As Alderson goes across the line. Still the same it is. Fisher has made his way past Sylvester up into fourth position. And I think that is the compliment has just been repaid back because Aaron Sylvester is very, very good and tight through Redgate and came down on the inside. That breakaway group, as soon as they get into uh, the trains and coppice, you're going to be looking for somebody to try and either tailgate through coppice. Alderson manages to hang on to the lead from Ascot to Benedict. Third across the line as... Uh, just made it by 0.26 of a second from Finley Arscott. So recovering from a, from a bad start where he got gobbled up by the pack, has fought his way back up towards the sharp end and taken the win in the uh, Pirelli Super Series 600 with the Super Twin Standards twins cb500s modern and retro 400s next out very quickly onto the grid uh, so my name is laurence norrington parois and i race in the club 600 class i do occasionally the endurance when i don't know if someone needs a ride i might join up but i started sprints i think in 2017 uh, i was doing endurance a lot before that and then um, endurance was great fun um, but it's just a lot of organization of the team so started sprints and uh, actually really love it just wanted to have a good time and um, I was done it in two years ago broke my shoulder so it's always a little bit scary for me but actually had a really great time got a sixth in class then a fifth and I don't know about the last one because the results are not up yet I've had the support from track prep racing for the last two years um, and ever since I've had the support my, my racing's just come along unbelievably faster everywhere the setup's brilliant the bike is just stunning and brilliant to ride and uh, that's all thanks to track prep I know nothing myself I just ride it <laughs> pole position is the number 100 machine of Matt Layett on his uh, 650 Kawasaki I am going to say ER6 probably get myself into a lot of trouble and be told it's otherwise then it is Jack Fowler on the 21 again 650 Kawasaki with uh, Tommy Downs number 17 on the front row of the grid warm up that completed all good top to bottom of grid wait for the red lights to come on which they have done and go off now as the pack goes away pole man gets a cracker at the start manages to get his nose out in front of everybody else and he's going to have possibly a good couple of bike links as they go into red a group of about five all dare i say in hot pursuit for one of better words as they come through into coppice that does very much look like the pole man making his way down as the bikes all stream through coppice and head down towards the straight they are pushing the absolute mechanical limit of these and they're spreading out all over the place as they come down the straight leader breaks cover and comes through past us uh, we're second and third, not too far behind it, but it's Layat who is in the lead. Matt Layat has uh, ran down a 120, followed in by um, Tommy Downs. Coming to you on a television very, very soon at BSB, I would put it. Leader brakes cover comes around. You can hear that absolute howl as they go past. Lovely noise from these Super Twins. Really is cracking to see where everything is now. They all started to bunch up. Cook goes past me absolutely flat as he can get onto the tank, trying to make up ground in front of him. 13th is the number 14 machine. to go 
Doesn't seem to be, he all seems to be a bit status quo, he's up on it. It uh, gets to that point sometimes in races where you, there, there is nothing really that's going to happen unless somebody has a real problem. Like I say, commanding lead, which will probably turn it away. Well, it has almost turned into eight seconds as he is going to just uh, cruise across the line. Takes the checkered flag. And then we wait for the second place to come across, which should be Russell Brook with Jack Fowler up in third position. I'm Matt Lay and I ride in the uh, No Limits Super Twin Championships. I've been doing, the, I've been riding a Super Twin. I started racing, came back to racing after a few years out, four years ago, with No Limits on a stock twin, and then I've been on a Super Twin for the last three years. So I've managed to get pole position and uh, won all four races. So I can't, can't ask any more than that. But you know what we're like as racers. Still a bit disappointed with the lap time, but when you're a rider, you know you're, you're racing yourself as much as anything. So and we're. We raced a different championship last year and uh, went, went a bit quicker here, so it would have been nice to match that time. But um, I know like Tommy Downs is in second place and he's coming on really strong, so it's, uh, it's only a matter of time before he's pushing us every week and then I think the lap times will start to drop. The SBS breaks 1,000. Brad Mercer on pole position. Now on the R1, Yamaha, Paul Barker, number 117. The Barker's electrical out on one of the BMW. Right, keeping our eyes on the front row of the grid. The lights are on and they are off. Oh, who's that from the second row that has made an absolute killer of a start and is going and go up the inside of Redgate that slots into second position. I think that was Peter Eccles that done that number four, who got away very cleanly, claimed the middle part of the track, but I think the middle, I think Paul Barker swept around him on the out on the outside of him as they were going through Redgate. So again, hear the bikes just screaming their way down through Hollywood and uh, Craner and they very quickly break out into the sunshine for us as they go up to McLean's and there is, looks as though there's starting to be a breakaway group. Somebody made a move for first position and that was a very day low colored orange machine, lovely to see. Still nothing to choose as they come into sight of McLean's with uh, Mercer trying all sorts of different lines to try and keep on uh, on track with the flying Paul Barker in front of him on the BMW as they race down the straight now towards uh, the Robert Chicane down there. He's still absolutely everything to play for. Mercer took a, an early look and a turn in but didn't make it to Robert Chicane still there. Is he going to take a look as they go through up into Redgate? And this will be with one more lap to go after this. Back markers, I don't think are going to play a factor in this one. I think they've managed to get themselves clear of that. But it's still Barker just in front of Halliday by 0.6 of a second. Was that 0.4 of a second? So still... The... And that uh, section where... Halliday manages to get a quicker run through the apex of Redgate as they are on their last lap. So if he's got anything left, he's got to happen now. It's going to be difficult to see which one of them comes out first because they're both the same colour bikes. But if I can work out the leathers, which I think I can do, we will see whether it's Barker or whether it's Halliday. Just what Peter Barker needed, which was a race win with... 
Brad Mercer, the championship leader, out of the equation. So that's points made up along the way from Barker. Halliday pulled it back to point four of a second across the line with Nicholson in third position, some 1.9 seconds.